some key rain on this video a money cruise scratch finish So what's the crack guys? This here is a K rand product. It's a Manacus render. So typically apply one day and scratch off the next day. I do know you can put accelerators in it and stuff to push it on quicker. But I do prefer scratching the next day and you know always always worked out well for me. Um, but yeah, everybody's different, likes different techniques and can only do the and show the techniques that work for me time and time again. So I plan the render. This stuff's obviously it's quite easy to mix as it's just add water. So there's no worrying about ratios um discoloring it's just add water and the colors in it everything's in it you don't need to be worrying about making sure your dyes are all equal as this color code it's anytime i've ever used any of it, it's always been pretty good i've heard some horror stories people getting the odd bag in color coats that is wrong color but thankfully it's never happened to me so been good although that being said i do remember doing a job quite similar to this a uh, wee bit smaller and we had all the, the it was either a k rand or a weber manacouche render and the manacouche render is like i said it's a scratched finished so anyway back to that job we had it all coated on and for the builder had i would say maybe 30 bags coated on the wall um, and the lady of the house came out and said it wasn't the right colour that she wanted such and such white and the one we had applied was called a polar white so it wasn't what she had asked for and obviously I was like well it's all on now it will dry out these typically when they dry out they dry out a wee bit lighter as well because the moisture leaves them so I said it will dry out later and I thought no, she was happy with that so obviously heading home the builder phoned me and asked me could I turn and chip it all off but obviously I had to had to get home and um, so basically phoned me later on said he's gonna have to chip it all off buy the, the, the brilliant white or pure white and completely redo it all and I had left some tools on the job as I was going back there, so I had to nip back, pick up my, my gear, and his, his his boys were there chipping away at it. Um, bit of a nightmare, but you know he was happy enough because he did say he 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 had made the mistake of the color, so it worked out okay for me. And like I said, he wasn't too unimpressed with it as he did say it was his mistake. So things do happen you know but thankfully this was all the right color here so only had to apply it the once which is good so previous applying everything had all my beads set and just damped down the walls a bit and got the mix on most of the beads were set a couple of days beforehand as well for coming the coat so not too bad just come and start applying the gear on and the way I do it is I do it in two main coats and then either flatten in the second coat or I would put a wee, wee cream coat over the top just just to close it in and lay it all down this is the first coat on all the way around some nice sweet details on this and yeah just just mix it in the mix this is what the, the colour coat render all looks like when we have it all on laid in. Obviously a few lines in it but it's going to get all scratched off the following day. And obviously I try to do all my straightening the first day 
So, no, trying to straighten it when we're scratching back. I do find a plan, the k and Weber, both uh, the Manacouche ones that I would use the most. I know there's another one out now, Fascia, or Fosco, I'm not sure, 100% on the name. At Rambo Tools sale, and apparently it's a pretty good product as well. But I do know that this stuff can be quite sore on the arms for coating and scratching off. I don't find it just as sore on the arms, but if it has gone a wee bit tighter, it will, will you know you will feel it. And so it is still again, it's a physical enough job, and you do gotta get nice, nice chunky beads and get a good coat of, of render on here and then finish it the way I'm finishing it as well will take a wee bit of skill believe it or not the five first outsides that I was doing with the guy who taught me most of my plastering skills was having one of these floats in my hand and finishing what I was think what the product was called back then was called I think it was called a Dakaran I think it was called Karen back then the time I first used it, it was called Dakaran, I think, and them houses still look good to today as well. So they've definitely weathered a bit of storm. I know Karen that has had a had it obviously with with algae growing and mosses, they can be a bit of a nightmare for some people. Possibly need a antifungal wash, a yearly antifungal wash, same as pebble dyson and things like that as well but yeah so the finishing of it is that will acquire a wee bit of skill obviously if it's tight you're gonna have to put a bit more muscle in a bit like rubbing up satin cement if it starts to dry you're gonna have to apply more pressure but where it's wet and softer you're gonna have to rub it a bit a bit gentler this this tool here is the same and uh, this float actually came from Rafina, scratch out float and the render and trial that I'm using to also cut some of my angles but yeah so the stuff you just kind of got to be wary not to, not to rub too hard in the same area and if the stuff is wet you might have to let it let it dry a wee bit more but give it an extra half hour check it just just sort of just gotta be careful on those types of things as this is the finished product this textured textured scratch that's getting here and you will notice I have the trial in the hand as well and that obviously is to help finish off just cut the corners and stuff and for the likes of reveals I tend to use it at the back of the trial to scrape them somewhat So here's the bit of a close up, you can sort of see it coming off and obviously if you're using beads or potentially rules that you will want to coat over the top and scratch back. So if you were you straighten all this wall up and then you add uh, about 3-4 mil up around your beads and you can scratch back flush to your bead then. And the way that I'm scratching this off you can see the shiny bits so they're obviously misses and they will need to come off uh, as like I say it's a scratched Manacouche finish it's a, a slight textured finish like a pitted a pitted render almost and I actually think I could replicate this same result in satin cement might be a wee bit more difficult but I believe I could definitely get that texture with satin cement mix now, Obviously, depending on your sands, going to be depending on the types of pits you get. But you can sort of see there all the shiny areas, and I'm constantly looking up and down and across to try and make sure I haven't missed any wee bits as well. You don't want no shiners in the wall. There is a slight glitter in this K rand. That's okay, where it's just the sand glitter and there are the wee bits of. I'm not sure exactly what they are. A mate of mine told me, a good mate of mine told me they actually had the glitters in. There's apparently, you know, some people really like them glitters and that's why they buy the K-Rand. As they want that big sparkle on the building. Most like the wee bit of bling. 
and um, they're okay to have you'll not be able to scratch them out as the me glitters will be in but I've, I've got a couple here one two three four five just beside my shoulder as you can sort of see there and obviously I will scratch them out so that's the kind of things you want to be wary of guys and this is this is a perfect angle to be able to see that so what do you all think guys um, so here's another wee close up of this all finished like I did at the start there but um, are, are these more modern renders taking over the acrylic render and the silicone monocus scratch render um, I don't really think particularly they are still seeing a lot of houses being wet diced and rendered and obviously built with brick so I don't think the these types of renders are, are fully taken over but I have seen plenty of extensions done with them and things people looking for something more modern but what do you think guys have you used more of this recently than what you, you first did personally I've probably used less of it but that's because I was working on sites doing it um, and that was many many years ago so I have personally done less of it over the years and um, have a couple of videos of it on the channel um, but have you in general done more of it or less of it in recent times of acrylic render and the scratch render the Malakus render so I'd love to hear what you all think of that and you know what do you think of the colours I, I do sort of like the idea of a coloured render but again you could you could still do that with smooth sand cement well I know I could could certainly have a go at getting some nice colours on sand cement as you've probably seen with the brick effect render and stuff but love to know no thoughts guys just just sometimes it's good to dust it down and then check for your your shiners as well also you can use an eye bar to scratch out I know somebody said to me before about it but uh, like I said earlier in the video I prefer to, to straighten mine before I scratch it we quick look at it all all red up here and cleaned uh, kind of like the black the dark against the light looks nice um, beads again plastic beads on this one again um, not not my favorite not not my favorite type of bead but you know it is what it is you gotta use them on this um, so let me know guys do you think you just want to watch more of these types of videos as well would you like a a more in detailed how to video and giving away plenty of tips and tricks and my exact techniques that I use to get to get it on I'd love, love to hear if there is anybody sort of more interested in learning about it as I'm sure I'll come across these jobs more often than not but yeah let me know down in the comments